All right, everyone, Cody here. So I'm currently at Chicken Hole Base, my Mars-themed desert homesteading project. This is not an episode of Chicken Hole Base, however. Instead, I saw something glinting in the distance. I think it's a piece of garbage or something, and I want to go get it. And I figured, since I'm going for a hike, I'll take the camera along and talk about something that's been on my mind. So let me flip the camera around real quick and show you where I'm headed. So right over there, there, there's two bushes next to each other. One's a juniper, the other looks like a sagebrush. Uh, I saw something glinting at me from underneath the sagebrush. It's no longer glinting because since I've seen it, I went and put on my shoes and the sun has moved. But I remember where it is, so now I'm going to go get it. So, uh, what's been on my mind? Well, it may surprise you to find out that me, someone who's building a simulated Mars base in the desert, who was a finalist for a one-way Mars mission, has over the years decided that, no, humans should not go to Mars. At least not anytime soon. Not until the planet has been thoroughly studied with robotic missions and we've gotten lots of samples back and thoroughly confirmed whether or not there is life there, and if so, uh, have the indigenous life thoroughly studied and samples in storage. Until then, humans should not go. Uh, humans... We're full of bacteria. We can't live without them. And so when a human manned capsule touches down on Mars, an airlock opens, bacteria, their endospores, which are able to survive the harsh conditions, will get picked up by the Martian atmosphere and they'll blow around the planet and they could settle down somewhere that is conducive to their growth, say a hydrothermal vent or something, and they'll spread and take over. They could even travel underground, and uh, if there's life there, they may outcompete it. If there was no life there, it'll be hard to tell whether there ever was, uh, because now you're going to have earth life there. Any samples you take are going to contain earth life. And check a styrofoam. Better get that. Uh, Robert Zubrin's argument is that Earth has already contaminated Mars, so we're not going to do any worse, right? The planets share rocks all the time. And I would argue that, do you know that for sure? You ever found a meteorite from Earth on Mars? Has that ever been found? No, it hasn't. And in fact, it may not be possible. You see, we get rocks from Mars, right? But Mars has a tenth the mass of Earth. The escape velocity is much lower. It takes less energy to knock rocks off of Mars than it, to, than it would to knock rocks off of Earth. And also, Earth has a thick atmosphere that'll make sending the rocks out even harder because they've basically got to be reverse meteors coming up out of our thick atmosphere. Mars has a thin atmosphere that'll let stuff through. So we don't know for sure that material can even transmit from Earth to Mars. It's got to come out of the Sun's gravitational well also. There's scenarios that I could envision that would cause material to get kicked off, but They're very rare scenarios, like a comet coming in at a particular angle, or a really, really big impact. And even if material is knocked off of Earth, the transit time could be so long that maybe all life is sterilized by radiation by the time it is traveled. We don't know that life could be transmitted from Earth to Mars. And even if it was transmitted from Earth to Mars, and life has taken hold, it'd be really valuable to go to Mars and 
figure out when that happened. How long has it been since the life diverged? And uh, while I'm on the subject of the, the valuableness of it, uh, if Mars life is completely independent of Earth life, that's a second genesis we can look at. There's loads of stuff we can learn from that. There's stuff we can learn from potential life on Mars that we don't even know that we could learn it yet. We don't even know that we don't know. There could be cures for cancer, new drugs, answers to life, the universe, and everything. But the life that we bring in our cap manned capsules could wipe out that life. And we may not even know that it happened. So we can't allow it to happen. We can't send people there and contaminate the planet. Now, I was thinking about this a bit uh, 10 years ago when I signed up for the Mars mission, but back then we really didn't have a choice. Humans are just so much better at exploring than the robots. You know, a human on the surface could do all the geology that the rovers did in an afternoon that they did in their entire time being there. But now the rovers are getting more advanced. AI is becoming a thing that is viable. I don't really see a strong reason that humans have to go. Like colonizing a second planet so that there's or eggs in, are in more than one basket, for instance, really doesn't make sense. Uh, there's nothing we could do to the Earth that would make it as bad as Mars. Like, even if we burned everything, there's still going to be oxygen in the atmosphere, right? The mass of oxygen in the atmosphere outweighs everything that could be burned a thousand to one. That's because oxygen is built up over billions of years on this planet. That hasn't happened on Mars, as far as we can tell. And if it has, well, it's been erased over the eons. Mars is a radioactive wasteland with no oxygen and very little atmosphere. It actually makes more sense to make habitats from scratch out in the asteroid belt or in Lagrange points or wherever. You know, gravity wells are for suckers. There's so much more mineral wealth outside of the planets that's easily accessible. Anyway, uh, let me flip the camera. I've gotten over here. So here's the two bushes. And this is what was glinting at me. You can see. Shiny there. Looks like a protein bar wrapper. And it is one of mine. I think I had this about a year ago. And it must have gotten away from me. So I'll put that in my pocket. Take it back. And properly dispose of it. Yeah, uh, if people go to Mars, and before we've thoroughly studied the planet, it's going to be a disaster. We're going to lose science. We won't be able to know for sure whether there was life there or if Earth life wiped it out. We need to be able to preserve that until the planet is thoroughly studied. If Elon Musk or somebody sends a mission there within the next 10 years before the government agencies have properly uh, you know, gotten samples back and had lots of robotic missions, then it's going to be as bad as uh, Christopher Columbus visiting the Americas. You'll recall that the Columbian Exchange brought diseases that wiped out 90% of the indigenous population. Some cultures got completely wiped out. All of their myths, legends, stories is all gone. It was a, a disaster for mankind. And something that we really should avoid doing again. We should learn our lesson from it. Now, I know it's just bacteria, but it's still potentially genocide on a planetary scale. We could be wiping out an entire genesis of life. 
when we really don't have to. We could set up a base on Phobos. Like I'd be I'd be more than willing to support traveling to the moons of Mars. Set up a base there so you could remotely control the robots if you didn't have artificial intelligence strong enough to control themselves. You know? So yeah, I'm no longer supporting Mars missions and Elon Musk should step down and start working on going to the moon, the moons of Mars or the asteroids. It makes so much more sense. And you're not having the potential of harming the planet Mars. Mars should be effectively a wildlife reserve for the foreseeable future until it's been thoroughly studied. Perhaps a hundred years or more, it should be protected. And at one point, I think you've gone Reddit, I said that we should put atomic bombs in orbit around Mars with the uh, orders to strike any landing site of any craft containing Earth life within minutes of touchdown to thoroughly sterilize the landing site. Now, I'll grant that that's fairly extreme and I don't think we will do it, but it wouldn't be a bad idea if some country decides to send a mission to Mars anyway, even if we've made it illegal, we need some sort of deterrent to keep them from doing it, and if they do, have a backup plan to erase their harm. Uh, if you wanted to do a one-way mission to Mars, maybe bring a nuke with you Touch down, plant a flag, take some photos, send it back to Earth, and then detonate the nuke. Sterilize the landing spot. Or, you know, take off. Leave the nuke on the ground. <laughs> you have your visit be just a few minutes long. It would be a terrible idea, but it would be better than just sending people there to stay for any length of time. Anyway, I'm almost back. See, got several pieces of garbage. It's a good little, good little hike. Got some exercise. Got some things off my mind. It's not scripted, so it's probably all over the place. But uh, yeah, something to think about. Let me know if you agree with me. Uh, let me know if you have arguments that uh, could persuade me back the other way. I'll see you next time.